And are now with us the magnificent Shaheen Muffin. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and my dear panelists, and Mrs. Jones. Uh, Sheila, thank you very much for your nice instruction. I want to start my speech with a film from Iran. I put the film together and I got it from the different side of the social media and I made that film today to give you a better vision of what's going on in Iran today. Please. People have taken to the streets across Iran, angry at the government after a woman died while in police custody. Masa Amini was a 22-year-old Iranian Kurd. She was detained in Tehran by the morality police for allegedly not covering her hair properly. She died in custody three days after her arrest. The police claimed she died from a heart attack during mandatory training on the hijab rules. But when images of her emerged in the hospital in a coma with bruises, they quickly went viral and provoked widespread anger. The protests, which have now been going on for weeks, are the largest mass demonstrations Iran has seen for years. <laughs> This important clip shows the courage and thoughtful policy of the Iranian women. They want to save their children from the morality police force. A group of women are wearing the Islamic hijab, hiding away in a corner, when one of their children was trying to get detained by the morality police. These women took it upon themselves to attack the police to assist their children so that they're able to escape. These courageous women are ready to fight the enemy themselves. Mm -hmm. 
چرخ سیدن برای ترسیدن به دخت بوسیدن برای خواهرم خواهرت خواهرامون برای تغییر مغز ها که پوسیدن برای شرمندگی برای بی پولی برای حسرت یک زندگی معمولی برای کودک زبال گرد و آرزوهاش برای این اقتصاد دستوری برای این هوای آلوده برای ولی از رو درخت های فرسوده برای پیروز و اعتمال انقرازش برای سگ های بیگناه ممنوعه برای گریه های بیوقفه برای تصویر تکرار این لحظه برای چهره ای که میخنده برای دانش آموزا برای هاینده برای این بهشت اجباری برای نخبه های زندانی برای کودکان افغانی برای این همه برای غیر تکراری برای این همه شعار های تو خالی برای آوار خونه های پوشالی برای احساس آرامش برای خورشید پس از شبای طولانی برای غرص های حساب و بیخوابی برای مرد میهن آبادی برای دختری که آرزو داشت پسر بود برای زن زندگی آزادی برای آزادی But each time I'm watching it, I cannot stop crying. And I'm seeing a lot of you, you got emotional and you are crying. That's the situation in Iran and Iranian people. Okay, I have to give my speech now. <laughs> Even I am so emotional, but I have to do that. I am an Iranian-American woman. Also, I was born in Iran and had a wonderful childhood growing up with two terrific parents. In 1982, I was forced out of my country and my roots. My independent thinking as a woman put me in danger with my country's ruling regime. After months of struggling and many difficulties, I finally got out of Iran and reached a safe zone. I look back and all of a sudden I became very emotional and tears rolled down my cheeks. Because I looked back and I said, can I go back to this country? But I knew I couldn't. Few people in the United States and Europe have ever known that feeling of being forced to leave a land they knew as home. Except maybe the European Jews who had the better experience of emigrating. Today, I wanted to talk a bit about the problem of today's world. We need to find a solution that will ensure peace, happiness, success, and prosperity in the future. Perhaps we can demonstrate that we are superior beings. While the history of mankind has yielded many improvements in society, we now are faced with possibility that things may just get worse. No doubt, people today have earned important rights, and social and civil laws 
have become more and more advanced and less barbaric. Yet cruelty and brutality have taken on more modern forms. And that behavior is still far too prevalent. As a result, even in this advanced time, we are witnessing the death of human beings caused by other human beings in wars through injustice. In addition to the needless war and civic injustices, there are simple facts of normal disasters. Surely, it would make sense for advanced and rich countries to cooperate with one another to find solution to natural disasters, which cause the death of millions of people worldwide today. Instead, those countries compete with each other for greater power and more wealth. Where is humanity? Really, where is humanity? You watch what's happening in Iran. Maybe animals are superior to people. The fact is, they don't destroy their own kind in order to survive. History has proven that when empires strive and focus on reaching greater power and wealth, they eventually reach their peak of power. A sense of their justice, faith, and their pursuit of power becomes self-defeating. They then gradually recede into the chapter of history. The history has proven that. All of the empires around the world, when they started to do injustice, that happened to all of them. There is right and wrong in all societies. And that applies to their politician too. But when a nation loses sight of its greater good and purpose, that nation will surely fade from power and relevance. Politicians can be short-sighted and self-promoting, or they can be statesmen serving their nation and the people's interests. We hope and pray for the latter. Now I'm going to talk. Uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the political relation between the powerful countries of world and Iran. In 1953, there was a coup against the Iranian leader Dr. Mossadegh. And in 1979, there was unwavering popular support of Ayatollah Khomeini to head the country. The political emotion of that time were totally against the Shah of Iran. There may be a question to what role everyday Iranian play at that time. Unfortunately, when one has absolute power, there is fear of people's awareness. The modern Iranian society at that time had no access to political consciousness. By taking advantage of this political weakness, the powerful countries were able to impose the medieval dictatorship on the Iranian people in the name of the National Front of Iran. The people in National Front of Iran were the followers of Dr. Mossadegh. Before Khomeini came to Iran, one of the followers of National Front of Iran, Dr. Bakhtiar, was assigned to him as the prime minister in Iran. Unfortunately, they get rid of him too. Now there has been a sudden change in the world. In Iran, we are experiencing a renaissance of a new generation. The strength and courage of political awareness and maturity of the new generation of Iran 
are almost unbelievable. How did this political development take place? There were many factors at play in this change. There persisted two different and opposing cultures. One mandated by the government and one derived from the powerful legacy of people and culture of Iran. The realities, the realities of a religious dictatorship could not be tolerated, and economic pressure had their, had their effect. Corruption and decadence in the government most certainly were factors. Most importantly, access to social media. By people throughout the country, enlightened many of what is possible in the modern civil society. Moreover, the role of Iranian women was and is the major factor. These women have been historically and still are today extremely powerful. I said that you know, in my last speech for International Women Day, if you remember. Maybe this legacy persists because of the power, powerful history of our ancestors. Surely, it has been passed from generation to generation. Important ingredients in that persistent legacy have been the preservation of our Persian language and our rich Persian culture. The fact is that today, Iranian women are the leaders in, in the stand against the Islamic regime of Iran. Of course, the uprising of the last few months didn't occur overnight. Iranian women have been fighting this regime for 42 years, every single day. Every single day, the Iranian women, they fought back against that regime. The Islamic government has not given women in Iran the means to have the pride in their identity, to grow, to progress. But despite this government repression, Iranian women raise children capable to pursue freedom. When women stand up, the whole family stand up. The undeniable truth is that the revolutionary rise of Iranian women and men has brought support from all Iranian worldwide. We have been witness in the field. These are the same Iranian who had a huge impact on the progress and achievements in many different countries around the world. Thousands of Iranians dispersed everywhere on the globe are now joined in solidarity and hatred of the corrupt regime in Iran. I would hope that you recognize the worldwide solidarity and animosity of Iranian opposed to the regime in Iran. If today we don't extend a hand of friendship to Iranians everywhere, at least, please stop supporting this corrupt regime. That's the reason why you know, Iranians are so, so angry. History has proven that the creation of hate in human is very dangerous and brings bad outcomes. This is the bottom line of the current regime in Iran hate and repression. So, once and for all, for God's sake of our future, for, uh, for the future of our generation, let us help each other to create a better future for human beings. This time, the revolutionary revolt, revolt of the people of Iran is invincible. Let there be peace on earth, and let this begin with us today. Thank you very much.